Hello everyone welcome to my channel. If you are new to my channel please subscribe to my YouTube channel, so you can join our tech family, if it is informative to you please like our video share it with your friends so they can get help with these video and don't forget to press all notification bell icon so you get regular update and don't miss our any single video. So if things are encrypted, how do we break that encryption? Well, that's going to depend again on the type of encryption that you're using. When it comes to WEP, one of the biggest issues that we have is the feeble initialization vectors that are out there, or IVs. And there's got to be a hospital joke there somewhere, right? IVs? No? Okay. So let's talk about some of the weak initialization vectors that WEP has. First, the fact that it uses RC4. Now, RC4 itself isn't weak. It's how WEP uses RC4. And how it utilizes it is it uses a key scheduling algorithm, or a KSA, to create the initialization vector. And that is actually added to the base key. And unfortunately, the first few bits are clear text. So, yeah, it becomes very easy to predict what the initialization vectors are going to be. Therefore, if I intercept enough traffic with WEP, I'll be able to figure out what your key is. The other issue is, is that the initialization vectors aren't explicit. So they're reused over and over and over on your devices. So if you get one key, you have everything. Kind of like one ring to rule them all. Another weakness in the IV is that the IV itself is appended to the beginning of the security key, which makes it vulnerable to what we refer to as FMS attacks. And the acronym stood for the last name of the three gentlemen that came up with the paper. I believe they worked for Cisco back in 2001. But it takes advantage of the weaknesses uh, in the RC4 key scheduling algorithm to go through and reconstruct the messages to determine what the key is. And we do this with simple scripts. It's so simple, in fact, a lot of the tools that we use for hacking wireless networks like Aircrack and AirSnort actually have the ability to exploit this type of weakness. Another weakness in the initialization vector is the fact that there's really no way to detect that the message has been tampered with. Now there might be some other methods such as checksum values that can look at the message integrity, but they have their own drawbacks as well. And probably one of the most critical weaknesses is the use of what we refer to as short initialization vectors. So basically within a few hours of traffic, in fact nowadays I, I can actually simulate the traffic to speed the time frame up, the same IV will repeat itself. And I can see those repeats using sniffing tools, capture the encrypted packets with the same key, and then again use a tool like Aircracken or Webcrack to decrypt the weak IV, which would then obviously give me the base key. And again, the base key is the base key for everyone. So knowing that these initialization vectors exist, it's very easy to crack Web. There are several tools out there, but they all basically do the same thing. You'll first want to make sure that you start up the wireless interface in what we refer to as monitor mode on a specific access point channel. Once we do that, we need to then check to see if the access point allows for the injection of packets. If it does, I'm then going to use a tool such as Airplane to do a fake authentication with the access point. And I'll use a source MAC address that's already associated with the AP, and I'll get that through sniffing, so that the AP accepts the packets. Now, any type of injection is actually going to fail at this point, because even though the MAC address is associated, even though the MAC address that I've listed is associated, my MAC address has not associated with the AP. So I'll end up starting up a sniffing program and grab as many IVs as I possibly can. Well, at least enough to break the base key. So in order for me to get a hold of a bunch of IVs in a short period of time, I'm just going to turn on airplane again into what we refer to as ARP request replay mode, which listens for ARP requests and then re-injects them back into the network. The access point usually rebroadcasts the packets, generating new IVs. Meanwhile, I'm collecting those, and then I take them and start cracking the IVs using Kane Enable or Again, the tool that you're seeing being used quite a bit here is Airplane, just whichever one you're more comfortable with. Now, because WPA is basically a grown-up version of WEP, it does make it a little bit tougher, but we can still brute force attack it if I'm able to capture enough packets. 
And if you're not familiar with a brute force attack, I highly recommend going back and watching the ethical hacking course on hacking the system. Same thing with doing an offline attack. In order to implement this, we have to be near the access point, only for a matter of seconds in order for us to capture the WPA and the WPA2 authentication handshake. By capturing the right amount number of packets, we can then try to crack this offline. And if you remember from our course on offline attacks, that's the biggest advantage that an attacker has is time. I don't have to sit there and be on your network consistently. And if you want to get really tricky, we do something called a deauthentication attack. And this is where I go, dang, because what this does is I'll go through and find an active client and I'm going to force the client off or to disconnect from the access point. Then I'm going to use some of my cool tools to capture the authentication packet when the client tries to rehook up to the access point which normally happens just within a few seconds of it being disconnected. That authentication packet includes the member our pairwise master key, the PMK, which I can then brute force or dictionary attack to recover the WPA key. And just like WEP, we can brute force the WPA keys. Some of the tools that we utilize for this process include things like Aircrack and Kismac and Reaver. If you remember, Reaver is actually used to grab the WPS. But that's only if you have an RSVP with a PDQ. Okay? Yeah, I got you with acronyms, didn't I? We hope you enjoyed the video and found value in the content. We value your feedback. If you have any questions or suggestions feel free to post them in the comments section or contact us directly via our social platforms. Thanks for watching.